Welcome to the Glacier Line video. Today is Saturday, February 25th, 2017, and I just wanted to give a small talk about uh, space for a layout. How many times have you heard, I don't have enough space for a layout? How many times have people claimed that you can't do anything interesting in a small space? Then those same people build a loop of track that just circles. I ask you, how interesting is that to watch and for how long? Wouldn't it be more challenging and fun to do something different than just circle? I encourage you to consider this. Give your railroad plausibility, believability, by designing it in a manner that it may function as a railroad, because that's what it is. Secondly, give it a purpose. No railroad circles aimlessly less a kiddie ride at a carnival. There should be a purpose for your railroad, a reason to be, because that's why railroads were built. Finally, let yourself and others have fun by giving them the opportunity to actually operate the train. I'm not suggesting turning on the power and watching it circle. I'm talking about picking up car loads or car empties and taking these to their respective destinations. Give you and others involvement. Become part of the layout. No, you don't need a basement. How about using an 8x4 sheet of 2 inch thick foam that is easily movable? Perfect. There are, there are other options as well. This idea that I will give you today provides you a continuous option. However, that is not the purpose or operational scheme of this railroad. Welcome to the Small Town USA Short Line. It's located in the Midwest in the flatlands of Middle America. Its mission is to service its two industries as a wholly owned subsidiary of a Class 1 carrier. Look at the diagram and you can see the 8x4 layout surface which has a visual divider running almost the entire eight foot length, less enough space for a single track to get around its ends. The purpose of this double side backdrop divider is to make the layout seem larger than it is. Please notice that the factory A loads, AL on the diagram, and the factory A empties, AE on the diagram, are on opposite sides of this visual divider so that one side may not be seen from the other. That is also true of the factory B arrangement. The key observation here is that it will require a facing point maneuver in order to get the loads and empties to their respective places because the factory A spurs are facing opposite of one another. The same is true for the B spurs. Please watch the Glacier Line YouTube video channel demonstrating facing and trailing point moves. The factory A and factory B may contain any commodity you wish. However, the length of the cars and the size of the engines will need to be small to negotiate the 36 diameter curves and to allow an engine to do a run around move as demonstrated in the last video listed and just mentioned above, the facing versus trailing point video on the YouTube channel. Uh, you have to be able to reach either end of any rolling stock on this layout in order to accomplish the mission and the purpose of the layout. When I designed this plan, I envisioned MTH electric trains, an old time steam switcher 040, and or a GE 44 ton switcher performing these operations. Note, any engine used for this particular operating uh, scheme must have couplers on both ends of the engine. Factory A has a couple of gondolas that go from the factory, AL, to the scrapyard for salvage, AE. Factory B, BL on the drawing, 
has some open top hopper cars carrying gravel over to a concrete company at BE on the diagram. There are eight pieces of rolling stock on the layout. There are two gondolas with loads at AL and two empty gondolas at AE. There are two open top hoppers with loads at BL and two empty open top hoppers at BE. The engineer, meaning you or your friends, and his brakeman, if two of you are working together, must decide the most efficient way of switching these eight pieces of rolling stock to their respective places. Once completed, the loads and empties are swapped and the action can begin again. This will take some time to accomplish. Switching moves are typically done at 5 miles per hour. You could do this as a challenge and compete against others for time or the least amount of total moves to complete this operation. You could deduct points for stalls, derailments, or crashing into something. You could do this simply for pleasure to simulate actual rail operations. Regardless, it is fun and enjoyable to become part of your own operating crew. Setting up a successful layout is far more involved than just arranging track to fit the space. There is a tremendous difference between track planning and the model railroad design process. People seem to be stuck on just fitting track to fill their space. They are missing the boat. They're missing out on a bunch of fun as well. If you're thinking about building a layout, ask yourself, what is the name of my railroad? Where is it? What is it doing? And what am I and others going to be doing to have fun and interact with it? I challenge you to think outside of the box and shift the age-old paradigm of looping and get your train going somewhere, doing something, and you being involved. And in closing, I just wanted to say it is very possible to have a small railroad in a small space doing, uh, doing an operational scheme. And here is an example of it on an 8x4 board. And I'm envisioning this layout being done in O scale. Obviously you could do it in HO scale or N scale or S scale or any other scale for that matter as long as the engines you used and the cars you used could negotiate the curves and would be of the appropriate length to fit in the sidings and allow the engine to do the runaround moves on either side of the layout. But this layout, while small in size, is packed with operating potential and fun. So this is something to consider in the future versus just making circles of track that have no rhyme or reason. Something to think about. It's time to raise the bar in the hobby. Give operations a try. Thank you for your time and attention.